Thank you. Well, I would like to thank Liz for inviting me and describing, in the, and describing myself in the program as an award-winning producer, you know, something really nice. Um, my point of view is going to be somehow different and somehow the same as the point of view we had yesterday from MDOS Stranger and Timo from Shipwreck. Uh, I say so because I'm not a director, I'm not an author trying to put his, his uh, film to the audience. I'm a producer. Uh, I already have produced six films. I produced back in 2001, The Living Forest, the first CGI animated feature in Europe. Um, I produced films with a budget of five to two million euros. And I will show you more or less in a clip with no sound. Uh, what I'm doing. This is uh, The Missing Links. It's an animated feature, 5 million euro budget uh, that we will screen in Christmas in Spain. Uh, it's being co-produced with Antonio Banderas, who is doing a great job, and we're learning a lot from him on a personal and professional level. Um, it's the first film by an excellent animation studio called Candor Graphics, and uh, it will be out this Christmas. It's been pre-sold in 35 countries so far. Uh, this is a drama we shot in Santiago with a two million euro budget with Luis Tosar. He's one of the main Spanish actors, really great actor. And Nora Schirner, a great German actress that also speaks Spanish. Uh, this is a comedy I am releasing in January uh, with Disney. It's a Local comedy, the English title is Lost in Galicia. And it's uh, really good actors and good acting and good comedy. By the way, if you happen to go to Galicia, please do so, because it's uh, the best seafood ever. This is a short film we shot in Santiago de Compostela. Santiago de Compostela is one of the three saints cities of the Christianity. But in this story, it's not only a saint city, it's a vampire for a vampire prison where they suffer because uh, rain is a holy rain, so they get burnt and so on. It's a short film we presented in the Sitges Film Festival, one of the main uh, science fiction festivals in Europe and the, the best one in Spain. This is a zombie western, a puppet animated project we are developing. And this is what led me to going nuts, because when I met this film, I was looking for a director for this, this feature. I always say animation is not a genre, it's a technique. So we can have family films, we can have um, action films, we can have horror films, and we ha can have comedies. Uh, this is a series we are no longer involved. And this is a series, a preschool series, with CGI characters and documentary footage that we are doing with Explora Films and Render to co-production companies here. As you see, this is the work uh, we have been doing in the last two years, because after being uh, working in, in CGI animated features for six years, I, I went on to work for two years in Zinkia with uh, the preschool series Pocoyo, and then I would decided I was a bit bored and decided to create my own company. Uh, sometimes I think it was a huge mistake, sometimes I, I don't. And this is what we have been doing in just two years. So, first of all, uh, my, my background is not an author, it's a producer, more or less established producer, uh, trying to know what is real in the digital world. I will go to the presentation now. Uh, 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 uh. Thank you. Welcome to the world of the ultra niche. I mean, this is not niche because, uh, I mean, niche would be action and science fiction and so on, but this is a film done with peanuts. Um, I, start, I like to start these presentations with this 
references to cinema and so on. Why? Because I think this same question referred uh, by Lumiere back in 1896 uh, that cinema is an invention without any commercial future. It's maybe what I would be saying. Um, no, I will start again. This, this is. We know this is not true, and we we don't know what we are hearing now that is is true and is not true. People say Paris is unstoppable. Is it true? It's not true. I don't think so. But I don't think at the at this stage we have to think take anything for granted because we are making the way as as we do it. And I will stress the point that we are making the way. I mean, this is nothing is written, so we have to make it up. This is a wonderful phrase by one of the Warner Brothers about who the hell wants to hear actors talk. And although he said so, he was one of the producers behind the, the first um, movie with Sam. It was Sam, the one who was really pushing forward, and he even died before the film was released, which is in a shame in a certain way. So this is the point here is that Sometimes we think the audience is going to use what we do in one way and does it in another. Because obviously the film was produced because they were thinking that they will love the music. But the music was not the point, it was hearing the actors talk. This is um, a phrase by Daryl Sanok about TV. I mean, who is going to be watching uh, uh, a plywood box every night? You know, we are still doing so. And if when people say people will get tired of TV or people will not watch uh, films in the smaller screens, I mean, how small is it? how small is this screen? How small if we compare with with uh, the person that is watching? If we compare this screen I have from the iPod Touch with uh, three-year-old children, this is a huge screen for him. So we have to bear that things in mind, and we have to open our minds. And this is what it's all about. Uh, a new, new generation of media consumer has rising demanding content delivered when they want it, how they want it, and very much as they want it. This is the key, and this is what we have to make possible. I like this phrase because first, it's already 2006, so. We know this is it since some years. It was said by Rupert Murdoch, who is not precisely a teenager. And he, he's from a big company, because it's not precisely a small company. So let's just start with it. First, um, I want to tell you how I got with this project. I mean, this project is something that I found when I was preparing Zombie Western, I was looking for a director. Uh, the main producer here is Alberto Lopez Garrido, really wonderful producer uh, that was generous to let me in into the, into the project, and directed by Juanjo Ramirez, who is a really <coughs> the driving force behind the project. Uh, there was a screening of this film, and I happened to be there. The producer thought I was a friend of the director, and the director thought I was a friend of the producer. It was a, a crew screening. But somehow, a friend of mine told me about it. I was looking for puppeteers, and, and I, I thought it was a puppet film. Suddenly, when I saw this on the screen, you know, a rough cut, you know, no credits and so on, I loved it. So I said, OK, let's do something with it. I mean, let's use this as an experimentation tool First, because we don't have to get any money back. I mean, we are not allowed to do this with a five million film, but we are allowed to do this with these films that cost almost nothing. And use this as a trailer for this puppet animated feature we were preparing. Um, I always have been very kind on digital distribution. I always, I love when people say, hey, you can't do that. So I, I, I know it's something should be on my personality that if they tell me it can be made, so I say, why it can be made? You know, let's try and make it. And I think that these kind of persons are quite around here because 
were proving that we can do things. So I decided to do the first day and day release in Spain. And also not do it, but also uh, work on the fact that we were doing it. You know, use, uh, Most of the things I will be talking about will be marketing because that's what we have to do when we become our own distributors and exhibitors. We have to present the film. First of all, we have to position the film. You have to decide what film we are talking about. We came up with, with the word, with this phrase, the mariachi of the animation world. Who knows the mariachi? We all know the mariachi. What does it mean, the mariachi? It's a more talent than budget. So this is one of the the log lines we use on the, on, the, on the film. We use this one, action and thriller, because one of the problems we have with this film is that the director wanted to do an action and horror film. This is not a comedy. We even invited some people for a screening of what we had addressed as a comedy, and those screenings were a disaster. I mean, I laugh when I see the film. I, you know, I really enjoy it, but it's not a comedy, and of course, it's not children. I mean, let's say sometimes I give the film to a friend of mine. And say, oh, okay, I will give it to my kids. Okay, well, you should check that out before. I mean, it's not bad because it's not, but for the kids, but it's not, you know, precisely happy animals. And also, we will build in on. Branding, and the brands now are the directors, are the authors, are the uh, actors, and are the production companies. And we were selling Juanjo Ramirez as the new Robert Rodriguez, which I strongly believe. And again, if you say this is the new Robert Rodriguez, you don't have to explain that many things. You also have to know which is your target audience. I think one of the main mistakes when people do presentations is say, well, which is your target? I mean, this is a film for all ages. I think it's one of the main mistakes because when you think about your target or primary target, you have to think, I only have money for one TV commercial, which is the target I will direct this commercial to. And this is what we are talking about. Of course it can open. Of course pe this film can be enjoyed by a guy who is six in his 60s. No problem with that. Of course, it can be enjoyed by a seven-year-old child, but which is the target audience? If you suspect it, say. If not, ask people around. And if not, just put the one that uh, advertises like. You know, just <coughs> this is what we decided to do. I mean, we suspect that, but this is also that is the 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 target that. Advertisers like, so we, we are very happy with it. You also have to build on your marketing strength. In Europe, we produce around 800 films a year, and 700 of them you can make a difference between one and another. Normally, it's a drama, normally, it's people in the 30s, and people in the 30s don't go to the cinemas. So, what is different about this film? Of course, we had one thing that was clear. I mean, I don't know any other film that has been done with peanuts. I don't know anybody else with a wicked mind as Juan Ramirez. So that was an easy one. We also were going to work on the fact that it was a day and date release in Spain. Journalists love those things regarding technology. Research and development is trendy. Everybody loves it. Politicians love it, although sometimes they don't even know what it is. And we also would be working on DVD and legal download uh, while release. And the fact that this is a film that was done by two guys for five months with 6,000 euros in the Canary Islands. You know, just they were friends, they wanted to do a feature. They were a bit bored with actors because they wouldn't so show up. So they decided, OK, we'll do a film without actors. And they came up with this crazy idea. And of course, this is a film that provokes complicity. This is so crazy, so outrageous, that you're not going to be people complaining about this film 
And if people are going to complain about the film, you have to embrace that um, you know, controversy. Uh, I think it's a huge mistake if you have a controversial film and you don't play with it. I mean, you have to, your first controversial move was to do it. And if you do it, you have to play with it. This is not the case, but for different cases. <clears throat> This is examples from day and date release. It's also a nice way to have Juanjo Ramirez in the same slide as Steve Soderbergh and Michael Winterbottom, which is, you know, it, it always would embarrass him, but it's, it's fine. And you have to have a start date. We decided to, to go for this day. This is uh, May the 25th is the day when Star Wars was released. And in Spain, he has been, I don't know, if somewhere else, it's like the Geeks Pride, you know, day. You know, we all dress up in costumes and, you know, Star Trek and Star Wars and people do parades and so on. So we decided to go with, with the day. We decided to go with the day and play with the day. I mean, when are you releasing? I'm releasing on the Geeks Pride day, you know, because, you know, we are like that. Um, I think that we have to build the momentum for the film. It doesn't matter the size of the film. I don't agree that you have to do things as soon as you start. I think you have to make a plan because you have to keep this film alive and you have a, a limited amount of time and attention span from the audience. So you have to think. And also you have to sell your financiers, your backers, you have to sell them that they are watching something that has never seen before. If you put the film online and it's not a huge success, why, how are you going to sell that it will become a success? This is a, an industry of, uh, of the future. You, know, you have to tell the guy that is in front of you that if he doesn't choose the film you're showing him, he will be like the um, executive that decided to say no to E.T. And then he went to another studio and got made and became the biggest uh, film ever. So you have to try to put that pressure on the people you're talking to. But for that reason, you have to have secrecy and you have to, to be showing him something he doesn't know. So what we did is try to, to make private screenings for opinion makers and geek websites, people that would be on your side, people that, you know, you're going to see something special, please come and join. As I said, we made a mistake because I'm willing to tell you all the mistakes we made. Um, we promoted the film as a comedy and it didn't work out. So that's why I say, <coughs> Directors hate it, but you have to know the genre of your film. Uh, and the genre is a genre. It's a thriller, it's a drama, it's a comedy. Uh, when, when you have to, to use four lines to describe the genre, you're not describing the genre. You know, imagine as the genre like a box. You know, somebody in a DVD store has your film. In which box is he going to put it? Just, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, we did a screening for members of the Spanish Film Academy. I was fighting with the Spanish Film Academy for this film to be recognized as an animation film. I wasn't successful in that because uh, the Spanish Film Academy thinks of animation films are anything that is done frame by frame. And my point is that animation is what the market and the audience considers animation. I mean, this is an animation film. Why shouldn't? Anyway, we tried. To, we did screenings for members of the Spanish Film Academy. Why? Because it was a direct marketing. We know that there were 1,500 1, members that are in the industry that would watch the film. And sometime, or maybe, one of them would like it and would call us. Didn't happen, but we, of course, everybody knows the, about it. Of course, we launched the web that we will check that out. And we prepared the EPK on the press material. Um, people complain that they don't appear in the press. And sometimes people don't even think about appearing on the press. I'm not talking about doing YouTube. I'm not talking about a blog. 
I'm talking about three columns in, the, in, in one of the main Spanish newspapers. This is something you can make it happen because if you have a product that is outstanding, you can make it happen, but you have to have materials. So we have an EPK that we copied from a major blockbuster and said, I gave my, my team the EPK, I want this. And they replicated. You know, when a teacher of mine says that if, if you copy from one, you copy. If you copy from two, you investigate. So we investigated a lot. And we have to know that majors do things that are very good, so, and one of them is the material. So if you go to a web page, you have, without any control, because this thing with uh, passwords and so on is, gets boring, you have the pictures, you have the press material in Word, so they can cut and paste. Um, you have uh, clips for the radios. We always forget the radios. We have the music. And, and, the, and, and, and we have a, a part of the music that is downloadable for, for the radios. As I say, the radios are in great need of material, and when they see that you have been taking care of them, they take care of you. And of course, we put the trailer in YouTube. This was the first phase. As you see, it's something you have to, to tell them, this is a secret, this is a jewel I'm going to show you. You are a privileged guy. Uh, build on that. I mean, don't just put the film around. It's a, it's a, I think it's a mistake. Then we did another phase. We went to the Cannes Film Festival. You know, why not? I am lucky enough to be a producer and I have shares in an international sales agency. So we did proper screenings. We even sold the film to the States for a TV station, you know, believe it or not, and an emitted being a feature being a screen in, in, the, in the States, in a TV station. As you see, we have here the director with one pin that we created, which is more or less one meter high. And we, of course, we made a piece and we put it in, in the web page. You can check it out. We went to the Cannes Film Festival. I mean, as you see, it's very similar, the name, but it's a very rural village in Galicia. So it it's promotes the, uh, you know, the country glamour. You see here the, in, the, in the two first pictures where it is, anyway. Everything done in stables and, you know, and it fits the film. Again, you get more local support from the press. Our release date was the same one as the Pirates of the Caribbean. And we, you have to play with that. So what we did was a parody trailer of the Pirates of the Caribbean, but with peanuts. We put it on YouTube, and we not even put it on YouTube, but we did the beta cam, and we sent it to, to the news programs all over Spain. And, and we were lucky that when one of them was talking about the Pirates of the Caribbean, they say, okay, this is one of the films coming out this weekend, but watch out, this is the other one, and this is the parody they did of the Pirates of the Caribbean. And so, you know, they were talking about Pirates of the Caribbean twice, and, and they have chosen as the national film to talk about ours. And we did a campaign with uh, Google Ads and so on, you know, just to get the taste for it. This is the web page that we will be watching later on. Uh, ours is a mixture of uh, several pages that you would be familiar. Uh, ah, what is this Canadian cartoon, very violent? That's it, Happy, Happy Tree Friends, sorry, I don't remember. Uh, I mean, we were inspired by the Happy Tree Friends webpage, and we were inspired by the Faster, the movie webpage. I mean, I, I'm not ashamed of saying so. And this is what we had, as I tell you, later on we will visit the, the webpage and we'll see. How did we open in Spain? As you say, we have chosen the, the date, we are doing the material, and one important thing is if you have little money and you have to hire somebody, 
hire oppressed people, oppressed person. I mean, in the two, three months you will invest in launching the film, you will not meet all the needed journalists. So uh, that was one of the things we, we did first. Um, as I was more or less established producer, we were lucky enough to get some funding from the Canarian, Canary Islands regional government and the Galicia regional government. And instead of doing a 35 mil print, we invested in, in promotion, in building the web page, and in hiring a press attaché. That was very useful. Uh, we opened in selected cinemas in Madrid, Barcelona, and Canarias. If you have few cinemas, don't say uh, few cinemas, just say selected cinemas, you know. Uh, and we did a rollout in the rest of the country. I still think that in most of the films, you still have to do a theatrical film. Nobody knows if you have two prints or 700 prints. Well, many people know, but, but not the main audience. And when being treated by the journalists, they will talk about uh, a film that is coming out in Spain with 700 prints or yours that is coming out with three prints. By the way, they were beta cam. They were not uh, 35. Um, but I still think you still have to do a cinema release. If we have done this as a DVD release, it's not there. I mean, people are used to pay attention to the cinema. Cinema is the screen that gets more media attention, so we still have to, to go for it. We have certain problems with exhibitors because the exhibitors don't like day and date. They are one of the most active enemies of day and date. Uh, I think they may be right for blockbusters, but for small films, it doesn't make sense. What has been done before by Magnolia in the States, it's, it's a, that sometimes the exhibitors get some revenue from the DVD sales or something like that. This is something you kind of still talk with them. An illegal download. We did an agreement with Filmotech. Filmotech is um, an initiative from the Producers' Rights Society um, to put thing, uh, to put films um, online legally. Uh, we did a non-exclusive agreement with them. Very important to do non-exclusive agreements because by doing so, we, we don't have to take care of technology and payment. So we could concentrate on marketing. And we would do the marketing ourselves and not deal with that. Um, so we, we could sell from our webpage or we could sell from their webpage. They would make a contest for people who want to download the film and download to, a pri to own prices from just three ninety nine. Now it's one fifty, even. Uh, it was okay, but we faced one problem: is that still the technology is not as amicable as it should be. So we had many people that tried to buy the film that at the end didn't because these micro payments are not still solved. In television, we didn't screen the film. No broadcaster wanted to try. Regional broadcasters wouldn't want it. First of all, I never wanted to give them the, the film for free. Um, I was not trying to promote the film. I was trying to make money with the film. This is a very different approach. I could have put the, the, the film for free on the internet, yes, that was one idea, but I didn't want to. I wanted to, to see if there was some kind of revenue. I wanted to try that. So I didn't want to give them the, the, the film for free. Obviously, I wouldn't charge them a lot. But, and we have one problem, is that in Spain, Spanish broadcasters are obliged to invest 5% of their turnover in film investment. But only broadcasters that broadcast films with less than seven years. That means that in Spain, not all the broadcasters uh, put new films. So uh, we had Calle 13, which was a partner we worked with, this, this uh, horror and science fiction channel in, with, from Universal, uh, 13th Street, I guess it will be the name in the States. 
but they couldn't broadcast the film because if they would broadcast our film, they would have entered in this obligation, which they were not doing. And of course, uh, we understood that. What we did is we found a DTT aggregator and we gave them the making of for free to put it on, on their screens on, on the day we opened the film. So we had 400 local TV stations putting our making of for free. And in DVD, uh, we started selling the film on June the 8th, just because we didn't have the DVDs ready. You know, when you do things with three people, that's what happens. We really went for a really nice DVD. We invested everything we got in the production of the DVD, as you see. Really incredible DG pack. Really incredible designers. And we dubbed it in Spanish and English and with subtitles in English, Japanese, Chinese, German, and French. What did we learn? Well, we learned that with few resources, you can, you can make a lot of noise. I think we all know that. But you don't need 2 million euros to, to create a presence. And also, you don't, have, you don't need those 2 million euros in your own market. When you play in your own market, you're the local star, and you're the one who has access to the journalists, and you are the one who can talk to the journalists in their own language, and we have to play with that. Uh, it's crucial, the materials for the media coverage. We did an APK in Vitacam. We did uh, proper production notes. We did uh, proper uh, audio clips. We did proper uh, downloadable uh, pictures, and we hired people for the press. Treat the media well and use professionals. Give them t-shirts, give them DVDs. Uh, you know, it's worthwhile. I mean, if, if your film is special, they will treat it as that. Then do a theatrical release. I mean, I think you have to do a theatrical release. It doesn't matter if you pay for the cinema. You can rent the cinema, just <coughs> talk to them, uh, Bill about it. We were only for one weekend in, in the cinemas in Madrid and Barcelona. That was fine. Another thing, rehearse the interviews with your team. You have to have one message and you have to decide which is the message you have to show. For example, uh, people kept on asking, which is the budget? I mean, the production budget of the film was 6,000 euros. Obviously, the film had been in post-production for two years, people working on the extra hours. I said, well, how do we decide on which is the budget? I said, well, what, what did they say with the mariachi? With the mariachi, they said, with what's the production budget? They didn't mention the millions and millions and millions that Warner invested in the post-production. So we did so. And you have to have one message. You have to know the you have 10 questions that will be asked by almost every journalist. And you have to have different people in the crew answering the same thing. And if they, they don't ask you that, you have to answer them that. Because what is what you want to appear on, on the paper? That's the main thing. Uh, don't expect for money. Look for agreements. I mean, with films, it's like a dog trying to bite his nail. They don't invest in your film if you're not famous. And when you're famous, you don't need the money because you already launched the film. Uh, it's always very hard to get money, but it's very easy to get agreements. We were, had a wonderful experience with Calle 13, this horror and science fiction page TV channel in, in Spain, and with many others. So it's uh, more straightforward, and sometimes when you have to get proper money, it gets too, too messy. Use the festivals as promotion after. Why use the film festival before? Why sell them something? I'm not very keen on film festivals. I think that sometimes they take our films, they don't pay for them, they don't invite the producers, they burn them, and that's it. So 
Why not use it the other way around? Why not use the film festival as a promotion for something that is already available online or in the DVD? I mean, create the urge to buy the film when it's already available. Why go to a film festival and then have the film six months later on? And then prepare these films as blockbusters. You have to get posters, you have to get a display, you have to have a press person, you have to have an EPK, you know, the same as them. The materials are easy. They're great designers, and we know what is this. This is the language you have to talk with your journalists. You're going for real. I mean, it's not that they love your film, they call you, ah, well, I have no pictures. Can you go and, uh, I don't know, let me, let, me, let me call you. No? Okay. Oh, thank you. Please go to the web page. You have all the material available. Do I send it to you by mail? It's a, I, I have been happy to work with, with majors. I did an internship in UIP, and I have distributed two films with Disney. I know how they prepare the things. I try to prepare the same way. I try to learn from people who are good at what they are doing. And then be positive and have fun. You know, we didn't lose money with this film. We didn't win a lot. Uh, I never have expected to be declared one of the 60 personalities of the Cannes Film Festival because of this film. I would never dreamt to be invited to London to talk about this film. And we had fun. <coughs> and I think people that watch the film and people that promoted the film did so. In business, well, we learn that there is people that will listen. There is many people that say no, but if you try hard enough and you know already the contacts and they know you and they know they're playing for real, people will listen. Maybe they will not be able to enter your first uh, project. Maybe not. Uh, use free tools. I mean, why invest in Technology, if there is free tools, you have YouTube, you have video podcasts, you know. Well. Uh, money is not there yet. I mean, we still have the problem of getting money back online. I don't think that's a mystery. And I think online will be like TV. We will have free content and we will have premium content. The payment for the premium content is not solved yet, at least in Filmotech. What we knew is there were more people willing to buy the film than the people that at the end bought the film. So it's not as good as iTunes. Um, and for the free content, we have to have advertisers. And the problem is that we always have had technology and then a consumption model. And we were setting the consumption model. But now we have the technology and somebody else is setting up the consumption model. There is consumption, but it's out of business model. And from those who want to make a living, because, I mean, if we just want to be internet stars, it's okay, we have to try to get that back. Because when we go to our place, we switch on our laptop, and we have paid for the laptop. We go on the internet, and we have paid a lot for our internet connection. And suddenly, we go to a web page, we don't pay anything. And not only we don't pay anything, but in this web page, there is somebody who is getting money for the advertising that is there in pirate, pirate web page. Anyway. Um, and then the long tail is not a first weekend business. I mean, this film has had a life, could again have a life. Imagine Robert Rodriguez loves it, and then promotes it and says it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, brand is money. We are working on brands. We're working on actors. We're working on directors. The producer can become a produ uh, broadcaster. And what did we get in return? Juanjo Ramirez. We were building on him. Uh, we m made the audience know about our f uh, future project. And we were working on the brand as Perro Verde, like home of edgy animation. Now everybody brings me any edgy animation project. And again, it's not the future. We have done it. You know, it's like M. Stranger said, just do it. I mean, it's, it's there. 
all the knowledge is available online. So just just do it and have fun. Um, how many time do we have left? Five minutes. Five minutes. Anyway, so uh, you can go to the web page and check out everything we put online, all the videos, all the materials, how we put all the media materials uh, so the journalists wouldn't have to. Uh, don't try to buy the film because it's, uh, we, we are into another thing now. But try to buy it in Filmotech and tell us about your story. And I don't know, I'm available for questions. Sorry? Will the, your be available? Yeah. All the, all the presentations will be available. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to share. No, no, can you repeat the question as well? Because we're recording. Oh, yeah. If, uh, the, yes, the presentation will be available. Uh, did you make any relationships with social networking sites? Uh, if we made relationship with networking sites, I mean, we had one one web page called Mary Station, and it's uh, regarding video games and pop culture and so on, and they were very supportive. They even did a contest between their people uh, to paint peanuts, and we would give them uh, you know, a t-shirt for, yeah, for the winner and so on. Uh, we didn't work that much with, with that, but it's, uh, it's more or less we try to spread the word through our network, and we try to work on the traditional media as well. I mean, and this is things that, that you put them there and sometimes they happen, sometimes they don't. Of course, we use YouTube. We had all our material in YouTube and, and we're very happy with it. But we had in YouTube, we had in any other places. We had in MySpace, we had in, uh, in iTunes, we had a video podcast. So it's, it's of course, with it. Yeah, regarding why I did it, I mean, it's a, it's a love the project. I mean, you have to have the right project. You have to have a unique project. You have to have a unique selling point. How many peanut animated features, you know? One. How many horror and action peanut animated features, you know? One. And I said it's part of a broader strategy. I try to do edgy animation films. I try to build on my brand as Perro Verde, on my brand as a producer, on the brand of Juan Ramirez as a director, who is an excellent professional. Uh, and I just wanted a try. I wanted to know if I could make money with it. We made a certain amount of money. And this is a film that could have been on a drawer for ages. They have invested two years in post-production, five months in shooting. I mean, they deserve something. We were in the Sitges Film Festival, the main horror and science fiction film festival in Spain, and we were screening there, the film. You know, we were with George R. Romero, which was, was great for the, the director, was, was excellent. Did you, did, you, um, did you do any focus groups for audiences with reactions and responses? Have you talked about um, genres and things like that? Uh, well, we, we had a blog from the director and that you used to talk with the audience, but I didn't follow that much, that part, because uh, I'm, I was more into, please go and see this film, and, and, and I, I was happy with what we were selling and what we were communicating. Yeah, we, you can do it, of course. I mean, but we, we did listen to the audience when they did a screening as a comedy, and it was horrible. People, said, people were expecting South Park. And this is not South Park. I mean, the design, you know, you see these little creatures and you say, oh, this is a comedy. No, it's not a comedy. Which it was a huge uh, milestone, this, to, to realize that we were promoted it the wrong way. And, and we did far in advance. That's why one of the log lines is action and horror like you have never seen before. I mean, we were not trying to say, this is not a comedy, but this is action and horror. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. In the cinema, we had it for one weekend in Madrid and Barcelona, and we had over, I think, over a thousand, you know, of people who decided to, to buy for a peanut film on the cinemas for a standard price. On DVDs, we sold, I don't remember now, uh, the, um, the amount from the webpage, but then we signed an agreement with a major DVD distributor and we gave them the rest of the DVDs because we are moving on to our next project. And in download, uh, Filmotech was very happy because it was the record film. I think we had in, in the first weekend, I don't remember, but it's, uh, I think it was 500 effective downloads. But we know that 5,000 tried to buy the film. So that's the main point, that the systems are just not still working there. So the most people uh, wanted to buy these digital downloads? Yeah. yeah. Um, can you write um, a little bit about the process of making the film? Yeah. Would you, um, it's not like a really low budget film now and now how to raise funds or as you actually start with, like, would you need to produce this to do that? So what do you think? Uh, well, the question is very long. And more, well, what I can tell you is more or less what will be my future projects related with digital distribution. My, my main idea is that we don't have to consider digital distribution like, like a ghetto. I mean, we have to try to blend it together. Uh, we can get um, subsidies for this kind of film. We only, sometimes we only have to apply. Uh, we have to <coughs> get um, TV rights for this film, because we can do so. And we have to try to, to, to create in between. The problem is that the system is very rigid. In Spain, we have an automatic subsidy, which is 15% of what you uh, get in the cinemas, the gross, it's a subsidy by the Ministry of Culture, up to 300,000 euros. Uh, but you have to respect the window. So we lost it in this project. It was not a big amount of money. And we will lose it in a project we were working on in May regarding sports. Because we don't want to respect the windows anymore. And again, what we have to sell the broadcasters is, is an event. So if you're selling an event, why not sell them the, the broadcasting rights before you get the DVD out? Why not before the cinema? Why go to the cinema? Just make the cinema an event and, of course, make it like a contest. I mean, if, if you're going to give away, I don't know, a PS3, maybe they, they will go there, an iPhone, something like that. Okay, thank you.